This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 546, What to Do About Non-Financially Minded Friends, part one, by Lindsay Van Summeren with makingsenseofsense.com. And I'm Dan, your host and narrator, the guy who reads to you each weekday from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And we always like to hear from you about what content you would like to hear. So if you have any topic requests, please share those with us over at oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com. And today's post comes from Making Sense of Sense, but it's written by a guest author on the site, Lindsay Van Summeren, who has her own site, Notorious D-E-B-T. That's NotoriousDebt.com. And there she writes about her financial journey, so definitely check that out to learn more about Lindsay. But for now, let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. What to do about non-financially minded friends, part one by Lindsay Van Summeren with makingsenseofsense.com. Everyone's got one of those friends. You know, the ones who spend money like they're on a wild Vegas trip right after payday, only to be completely broke and living off ramen noodles until the next paycheck comes in. I know, because I used to be that person. Over time though, I learned to manage my money better. Now, one of my biggest struggles is what to do about friends and family who could also clearly benefit from better financial management. What's the best way to help them? Should I even try? How do I not come off as an annoying know-it-all? How do I not sound like a parent lecturing their kids? These are some of the tough questions that keep me up at night. Why do Americans love football so much is another one. If you struggle with these issues as well, I've got some tips for you. How I learned to manage my money better. For my entire adult life, until just recently, I always thought that as long as I kept the balance in my checking account around $3,000, I was doing fine. If I had more, I spent it. If I didn't, I stopped spending. Forget about savings, retirement, and investment accounts. Besides, I had plenty of excuses. I would make more at my next job, or I'd get a raise at some point. I was just a student, so I thought once I graduated, my income would go up to match. Surprise, it didn't. In fact, on a per hour basis, I was making more money in grad school than I've ever made at any of my day jobs since graduating two years ago. I expected things to get better, but they only got worse. I made less money, and now I had a $380 monthly student loan payment to boot. Things were sinking fast. I'd always been bad with money, but now the situation was dire. So to cope, I did what I do best. I researched the crap out of it. I read books and listened to hours and hours of personal finance-related podcasts. Slowly, over time, my financial management skills got better. I won't say it's all roses and strawberries now, but if I hadn't taken action, I strongly believe I probably would have had to declare bankruptcy by now. Learning how to actually manage my money so I'm not always broke has been incredibly empowering for me. What I once believed were pipe dreams that I could never afford suddenly seemed possible, with a bit of work admittedly, but still. I wanted to shout it from the rooftops, write about it on the internet, and tell all of my friends. I wanted to shake them desperately and say, look, we don't have to be broke. We can do fun things too. We just have to stop buying so much takeout. Obviously, I never actually did this because I'm not writing this from inside an insane asylum but I wanted to. It's something I've struggled with constantly since learning about managing personal finances. I wanna help my friends, but at the same time, I don't wanna seem overbearing. After several trial and error adventures, sorry, nameless friends, I've learned a few things about how to deal with these types of friends. Hopefully they can help you as well. Step one, do they actually care? The first step, if you want to help your friends out with your amazing knowledge, is to discern whether or not they actually care. There are two possible outcomes to this scenario. In the first scenario, your friend just doesn't care. If so, you don't wanna push it on them. They might resent you for it or even consider you rude. It would sort of be like suggesting to an overweight coworker at an office party that maybe they should go for the carrot sticks on the veggie tray rather than the cake slices. It just lacks tact and finesse. Instead, this person needs something you can't provide, a personal driving motivation to do something different. Maybe they still need to hit rock bottom before they realize the error of their ways. Many of us, myself included, needed that kick in the pants to get going. Maybe they'll never develop a motivation to change. In any case, the only thing you can do here is just to hold your tongue and be thankful you yourself have seen the light. In the second scenario, your friend is interested in changing but just lacks the knowledge about how to do it. This is where you can actually help them. Determining whether or not your friend is truly interested in learning more about managing their finances can be tricky. You can't just walk up to someone and say, Hey Bob, do you give a flying hoot about your money? No one in their right mind would say no. 
Instead, use your own intuition to see if they're open to learning more. You can drop subtle hints, like small things that have worked really well for you. For example, when a friend complained of not being able to afford an auto insurance bill coming up, I told her about how that used to suck for us too, until I started tucking away a small amount each month so that when the bill came due, I already had the amount in full waiting to be spent. Step two, hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled What to Do About Non-Financially Minded Friends by Lindsay Van Summeren with makingsenseofsense.com. And a great way to become more financially minded yourself is to track all of your income and expenses. And you can actually do that for free with a simple spreadsheet that we give to you. Every person who signs up for our weekly newsletter over at oldpodcast.com gets that spreadsheet. Plus, it comes with a free video tutorial as well. So again, to get that, just join our free weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com. And if you do that, you're also going to be entered to win books from us each and every month. And that's a wrap for today. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll be back tomorrow to finish up this post. See you there, where your optimal life awaits.